I've done few videos about skin in Blender. They're still my favorite way to approach skin. But the problem is all of them are texture based, meaning you have to find really high quality 3D scans, which usually cost a lot of money. And the free ones usually doesn't include the body or have poor quality. That's why many people have asked me to do a video about sculpting it by hand. So in this one, we're going to fully sculpt the face inside Blender using only free brushes. So it'd be accessible to everyone. And the results, as you can see, is pretty detailed and nice. Before we move forward, the full real time version of this tutorial is close to four hours where I sculpted the full body from the face and hands to foot and other parts of the body, which I cannot show here. You can get it from the link in the description if you're interested, of course. Also, I got a few cool add-ons I made. Go ahead and check them out. They're really cool. Trust me. Okay, I'm done. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna divide the sculpting into three stages. Stage one is gonna be all about sculpting main features like skin pores using a brush bag. Stage two is gonna be about sculpting the wrinkles using only wrinkled brushes. Then in the stage three, we're gonna manually add creases and wrinkles by hand to maximize the realism. It's important to keep the priorities right and not mess up the steps. First, download the brush bags from the link in the description. It's completely free. You just need to make a free account to download them. Fire up Blender 4.2 or anything older, cause after Blender 4.3, brushes were moved to the asset library and made the old brush packs unfunctional. But we can switch to new Blender after the second stage. If you have a reference app, use those, but if you don't, drag out a new window, switch to UV editor, click on open and open the image I made for the brushes. Now drag another window from the bottom this time and open up the reference image. Now we can use the one on the top for the brush types and one in the bottom to know how the skin actually looks. But first thing first, make sure you have a multi-res modifier added to your mesh. We want it to be at the highest sculpt number as your PC can handle. We're gonna sculpt skin for fuck's sakes, so keep that shit as high as you can. Then hold Ctrl tab and go to sculpt mode. Now to import these brushes, go to file, append, find the files you just downloaded, go to the file and enter the brush folder and import all the brushes. Import the other one too, but this one has a lot of useless brushes in there, so only import the ones starting with S. To access the first stage brushes, pick up the draw brush. In the tool menu, you can see the thumbnail of these brushes. We can now start from the upper cheek. According to our ChatGPT recommendation, we get these brushes. You can now easily just type in the number in the search bar and use that brush. In this case, brush 9. This brush comes with anchor type. That means you can drag and it applies the skin over on the areas based on the radius of your brush. Before we move forward, let me explain how we're gonna use these brushes. First, press N to bring out the right menu and select the tool tab. Some brushes have anchored on default, meaning you click and drag and it will apply the skin over the surface based on the radius. But if we go to the texture and change the mapping from tile to view plane, we can drag to scale and rotate the skin. This way you could control the size and rotation of the stretch brushes pretty easily. We can also change the stroke method to space and mess around with the spacing number. Now we can sculpt over the surface by holding click and painting on the surface. We're gonna switch between these when it's needed. Keep applying the skin over the upper cheek, but make sure you're not doing it too intensely. For the side cheeks, I think brush 3 is decent, but you can try the other numbers to see which one works better in your case. This zone is really important because it catches a lot of light. Moving on to the inner cheek, we got these brushes. I found brush 11 better in my case, but you can try the others too. Then we can continue applying the skin all the way to the ears. Brush 11 is decent for this job. To add more realism, we can use brush 26 to add some imperfection to the skin. Just apply the brush over the skin we already sculpted, but make sure the strength is not too intense, cause it really messes up the mesh.
for the scalp itself. Since we don't have any stretching on the skin, we can use a simple skin brush, like Face Skin 23. But to make things even easier, in the tool menu, change the stroke method from anchor to space, so we can actually paint the skin by moving the mouse instead of scaling it. This helps speed up the process. Just hold click and paint the skin all over the scalp. If you see they tangled up to each other or have too much spacing between them, just increase the spacing. For the bottom, things get a bit more tricky since we got some wrinkles going on on the skin. And also we got directions to these wrinkles. Let's pick up another brush like brush 10. Now click and drag to scale and rotate the brush. The wrinkles are obvious. You have to align it with the direction of the stretching in the bottom of the eye. And you have to place the next one the way that wrinkles align with each other. Do it all over the eye. Using brush 19, let's add some pores all over the eyelid. Using brush 5 and 23, let's add some pores all over the forehead. Forehead also doesn't have that much wrinkles, at least in this age group, so we don't need to do much here. In the outer eye area, we usually have some wrinkles. Using brush 6, we can replicate these wrinkles. But remember, this character is in her 20s, so we shouldn't add too much wrinkles here. Then we can add the same wrinkles on the eyelids, but make sure to maintain the direction and keep aligning the wrinkles with the one before that. Then we can add some normal skin pores to fill in the empty space between the eyelids and the eyebrows. We can use brush 11 on the nose, cause it has more pronounced pores. The skin on the nose area are more spread apart and more noticeable than most of the face. Then we can use these brushes for the jawline from bottom of the ear to the chin area. And for the chin itself, we also need a more pronounced pores brush since the chin is also has more noticeable skin pores. For the part between the lips and nose, we can switch to brush tree for example and place these pores here. Okay, most of the time skin is not perfect, so we need to add some irregularities to make it look more real. Brush 26 is the best choice for this situation. While the strength is low and the brush is small, click and drag to add these extra details to the skin. You might not get it on the first try, but as you keep doing it, it will get better and better until you find the results that you're looking for. The ear usually have a smooth skin, so if you want to add pores to it, it's better to smooth it out slightly so it would be less noticeable. For the neck, we got these four brushes, but I think brush 22 works best. So let's apply it to the whole neck, all the way from the front to the back.
Okay, we're done with the first stage of sculpting the skin. Now we can move on to the second stage, which is placing the wrinkles. But these brushes are not under draw brush. We have to switch to inflate brush. Now the brushes should be here. But unfortunately, they do not have a thumbnail. So we need to identify them from the texture tab in the tool menu. For the eyelid, we can use the S4 brush, which is a wrinkle brush, and add some wrinkles based on the direction of the eyelid. Maybe some more on the connecting parts, where the eyelid folds connects with the face. These places usually affected by blinking, so it makes sense we get some wrinkles. And also some more on the bottom of the eye, in this direction. For the lips, we can use the same brush. First, let's disable the X mirror so it doesn't look too symmetrical. Since we're using anchored stroke, we can determine the direction of these lines. If you look at the left reference, you can see we got some horizontal lines on the top lip that we can execute here. We also got some wrinkles that goes in this direction to the nose. So let's pick up brush S2 and while it's on anchored scale, drag and rotate it so the wrinkles face the nose. I want to keep these very subtle, just lightly into the surface. Keep adding that around the eyelid, but make sure you're on a really low strength so you don't disturb the mesh completely. Maybe add a bit more on the outer eye. We can add some on the inner cheek, where the skin folds while smiling. Maybe some on the outer lip too. Now if you look at the image, we got some slight wrinkles on the bottom of the lip. So let's add those as well, but make sure to do it horizontally. Moving on to the lips, we already have some huge pores on the mouth, which we do not want. To make it more subtle, we can do a cool trick. You can go to Maltura's modifier, bring down the sculpt number to something low, like 4 or 5, then smooth out the surface of the lips completely. But if we switch back to higher sculpt number, you see we have all the details back, but the surface is much smoother, and we are ready to start the third stage which is adding manual details. We got a lot of details on the lips. We can achieve those with crease brush. Shift C to pick up crease brush. It's better to start adding the vertical lines first. These lines follow the natural curve of the lip, radiating from the center outward, and helps suggest the subtle folds in the skin that occur when the lips move or rest. Then after that, we can add some horizontal lines against these lines to create rectangular looking pores all across the lips. Be sure to look at the reference image here and now to identify these lines. Lip surface is almost never smooth unless using products. So most likely, you will need to sculpt very small details like these. Although it really depends on how dry the lips are and how old is the character. So be aware of these. Notice we left the middle unsculpted, that's because if we sculpt it when the X mirror is enabled, the lips are gonna look so fake due to being exactly the same on both sides. So let's turn off the X mirror, then using a brush with a low strength, add some horizontal lines on the lips. If you look closely, we got some lines where the lips and the skin connects, but be gentle with it, we don't want too much. Seems like my model wasn't mirrored correctly, so I will have to manually add the details to this side of the lips as well. Moving on to the bottom lip, again we should start by adding the horizontal lines with a low strength. Then using the same brush, add in the small cracks from top to bottom, from one side all the way to the other side, while looking at the image for reference. But make sure to avoid adding fully straight lines, cause these are all crack lines on the lips, so they are not fully straight. Make sure you're using a small crease brush to add these lines and also cut the line on some parts so it's not just a repetitive straight line. After that we can add smaller details like these around the lips. Now 
As you can see, we got some smaller details around the edges that we need to add using even a smaller crease brush. Again, based on how dry the lips are, we need to add more creases. If you're going for dry lips, you can add more creases between the main ones, but do it with a brush with low strength. After that, you can pick up inflate brush and add more volume to these bumps and creases on the lips. Crease brush is really useful for adding additional wrinkles like the one you see around the eyelids. We might have some here and maybe some on the top of the eyelids. I mask some areas just to get a better idea of how it will look after the hair and makeup. And considering we only use Blender with free brushes instead of ZBrush with paid brushes, I think it turned out pretty decent. I'll sculpt the rest of the body, including hands and feet and other areas, which is a no-no for YouTube. But you can download the full tutorials from the link in the description if you want. Also check out my Patreon and Gumroad page to download the real-time process videos, tutorials, and a lot of amazing add-ons. See you on the next one. Peace.